Hi, welcome to my second tutorial in the series of level editor tutorials that I've been doing. Uh, in the first tutorial, I basically went over just the level settings tab. Uh, go watch that if you haven't. It's got a lot of good information, kind of long-winded, but um, you can just kind of fast forward through it uh, as I talk about each segment and what it does. So let's load up our test level again here. Uh, in this video, I'm going to be covering the level editor camera basics, uh, hotkeys, and track manipulation. So let's dive into it. Uh, first things first uh, are the camera hotkeys. So um, if you're going to be using Control Scheme B, which I recommend, uh, which you can find in the editor tab here, you your default, uh, your default camera controls will be holding right click to pan uh, like this. Hold right click, move the mouse around. This is what happens. Uh, left click to select an object. Uh, middle mouse click to center the camera on the object. And right click to place the cursor. Uh, now that's important because of a couple of other hotkeys that involve with snapping uh, objects to cursor position, which is very helpful. So if you want to place an object, instead of spawning it uh, and then placing it by hand, which can be very, very tedious, you know, using gizmos, um, using the cursor can be a lot, uh, a lot faster. So if you wanted to, for example, uh, spawn a cube, but you didn't want it over there because that's the default cam, you know, um, cursor location, you instead wanted it over here. Instead of, uh, for example, using the move gizmo, to drag it all the way over here, and then using the camera to try and you know center it um, on on this object. Um, there, you could, you know, for example, uh, just middle mouse click uh, to center on the object for one, uh, and then two. Shift S is a hotkey that immediately moves whatever object is highlighted to the position of the cursor which is very helpful when you want to place a lot of uh, objects really quickly, for example, on a road, like a, a street lamp or something, and then um, move it kind of in a, a more precise manner from there. Uh, additionally, if you wanted to move the cursor to an object, uh, for example, I wanted to place a cube, and then I wanted to also place a ring on top of the cube to, for example, make a ring that was also a cube, uh, then that would be helpful for that scenario. Um, so there are a couple of different gizmos available to you. When you select an object, there's W, E, and R. Those are the hotkeys. Uh, the gizmos they stand for are, uh, W is obviously the, the move gizmo, as you saw. Uh, e is the rotate gizmo. R is the scale gizmo. Uh, and you can scale along different axes. Additionally, uh, with the little graphics you see there, an, uh, an X, a Z, and a Y axis. Um, let's see, that pretty much covers it for the, uh, for the basic camera controls. Um, now for splines, there's a couple of different nice keys that I like to use for splines. Um, splines obviously, of course, being the uh, track manipulator nodes that are, um, and, and what they, uh, what they're on either side of. A spline is the, uh, is, is a piece of track that you can bend like a, like a noodle. Like a, like a piece of pasta, kind of similar to this. It automatically calculates the, the smoother transition from two points depending on the rotation and angle uh, of both track manipulator nodes. So, uh, first things first, in order to hide and then show track manipulator nodes, you want to press the T key. That's the default uh, key binding. I don't think any of the keys in the editor are rebindable, but... I don't know, maybe in the future. Anyways, um, so a couple other different things when it comes to track manipulator nodes. Um, for general track layout, what I like to do is use the perspective modes. Uh, if you have a number lock keypad on your desktop or laptop, you can use 1, 3, and 7 to snap your perspective to that mode, which can be useful, for example, um, creating a piece of track that, that, uh, that stretches out on one axis, you know, kind of a, in, a, in a straight way. So if you wanted to have a bit of track where there was a, a loop going sideways. Then this is, this is the hotkey would use. Uh, 
Um, and you can you can get both a down and an up perspective by holding control and pressing either seven, one, or three. Um, it, it gives you all six different perspectives to choose from. Uh, additionally, there's something called orthographic mode, which I'm gonna go over just briefly. Orthographic mode uh, basically makes everything the same scale. And it looks kind of weird if you're using the normal perspective mode, but it kind of makes sense when you use the um, uh, when you use the numlock perspective modes, because as you can see, everything's the same size in a matter if it's off on this side of the uh, screen or off on this side of the screen, um, everything's kind of like a perfect shape, like it would be in a, in a blueprint. Uh, but whereas if I untoggle that, you can see it kind of stretches toward the camera. And that's what orthographic mode does. It makes everything flat in just one forward image. All right, so um, I'm going to go over some of the uh, modifiers. If you use gizmos, uh, there are two modifiers on the keyboard that you can use with them. One of them is the control modifier. If you hold down control, it snaps to, I believe, five degree angles. So uh, it's going to snap every, f you know, uh, every five radians, meaning uh, if you started at 90 degrees, you hold control and snap it once, it'd be at 95. Um, additionally, there's shift, which only modifies it to be, uh, to be slower. So uh, if you wanted to get kind of a really odd, weird angle, um, then you could hold shift, and then it moves uh, a lot slower, so you can, you can kind of uh, have a little bit more control in what angle um, or what position, or additionally, what scale uh, the object is. Right, um, and then I'm, before I call this video, I'm, I'm just going to go over some, some basic principles in symmetry and uh, how to create kind of loops and um, more complex patterns in the distance level editor. So you can pretty easily make symmetrical shapes if you um, hold down the control key because it allows you to snap to, to um, snap to specific angles. So you can create uh, real nice, smooth, repeating images. And additionally, um, I feel like I should mention, there's Control C and Control D, um, both copy and duplicate. So you can Control C and Control V, copy and paste uh, an object, and it will copy onto wherever the cursor is. Uh, additionally, you can duplicate an object, um, which if you duplicate immediately it kind of just just moves around um, based on which direction you're looking but if you press uh, X Y or Z it snaps to a, a, a position so uh, if you wanted to duplicate this over and over you could just control D uh, and then press Y to snap it on the Y axis and then you've got a kind of like repeating snake pattern all right um, Last thing I'm going to do before I finish this video is I am just going to go ahead and show you how I made this nice little loop here. Uh, so you want to go ahead and grab an Empire Spline Road from the library menu. And you just search road and it'll um, give you a whole different selection of roads you can use and take your pick. They all, um, they all function the same. So what you want to do is uh, first you've got uh, a piece of of road, you want to extrude the track, which is a hotkey I haven't mentioned. You've seen me do a couple of times. Uh, you press X, just tap it, uh, and then it's going to extrude the track and kind of move um, freely, kind of like a like a little piece of pasta dangling from a finger after you take it out of a boiling pot. Uh, you can press right click to cancel out of that kind of interface, and then uh, I recommend going into perspective mode, uh, and then you rotate it 180 degrees and then move it up and over. Uh, so it's directly overhead. And how much distance is between the part you, um, that you, you move it from and the, uh, the top part doesn't, doesn't really matter. It, it kind of makes a pretty good loop no matter how big you, you get it. But generally, I mean, I would just try and be reasonable. Uh, and then you extrude the top part of the track and then you do the same thing in reverse. You Flip it 180 degrees, and then you move it down to where the bottom track is. All right, and then you enter top view, and then you've got to move it to the side so it doesn't overlap. Because right now, um, both pieces of track uh, were kind of overlapping. And the uh, top of the loop is right over where the first one is. And ideally, you want it to kind of um, 
you know, span out like that. You want it to be first part of the track, top part of the track, and, and then where it lands. Uh, and then after, after you've got it all kind of laid out like this, um, you can just rotate it ever so slightly uh, so that the loop is a little bit smoother. And there you go. Uh, there's just kind of like a nice, perfect, seamless loop there. And you can use these for corkscrews, twists. You can do whatever you want with it. Uh, you apply the same principle to just kind of different ideas. Uh, and you can do a lot of stuff um, making just some really nice, um, well-formed tracks. Uh, just, you know, again, like I said, using uh, the control modifier uh, when you're using the gizmos to just kind of make sure it, it, it falls into to neat lines and ratios and everything is, is a, uh, a multi multiple of five, <laughs> um, whether it's the position or the rotation. Obviously here I started from a weird rotation, so it's got some decimals there, but as far as the actual rotations, everything is nice, clean numbers. Nothing is, you know, for example, if I were to just you know, move it without holding down a uh, a snap key. You see it, it it gets into the decimals because it just just takes the raw mouse input, and then maps that directly to the track manipulator mode. All right, uh, thanks for tuning in. If there's anything you'd like me to cover next, leave it below in the comments. I'm just kind of kind of be um, taking a free form approach to this and eventually trying to make a a track out of this um, uh, out of this out of this test map that you see me building right here. Uh, incorporate a couple of loops, uh, maybe some simples. I'll show you how to build uh, more complicated objects like this that look like more than just the sum of their parts, which is a, an irregular triangle and a sphere and some rocks, etc. So I uh, hope to see you next time and thank you for watching.